Firstly, this statement we are telling the Ruto regime, shape up or ship out. We begin by a salute to all Kenyans who turned out to assert their sovereign will at the constituency level on Friday last week on the forums arranged for public participation on the impending impeachment of one Rigadi Gashagua, the deputy president. Kenyans were with great clarity and unity, united in their voice, telling both Ruto and Gachagua that they stand impeached. They came in as a pair and they'll go home as a pair. That was the message of Kenyans. Indeed, it was very impressive that Kenyans were not diverted from the pressing national issues to power games. And they were able to put out their pressing needs which should be looked after rather than the power games of impeachment. Our constitution is the supreme embodiment of our collective will as a nation. It's a covenant entrusted with the protection of our sovereignty, democracy, and social justice. It is the solemn duty of the president as the nation's highest custodian of this sacred document, assisted by his deputy to safeguard its principles with unwavering fidelity. Today, as we stand at this historic juncture, where the actions of President William Ruto and his deputy Rigadi Gashagua constitute not only a gross dereliction of duty by the presidency, but a calculated assault on the foundational pillars of our republic. The presidency and the entire government were impeached by Kenyans as far as we are concerned on the 25th of June this year during the Gen Z protests. The exercise therefore arranged for the impeachment of the deputy president ironically turned into a reminder of the entire presidency and government that they stand impeached by Kenyans. And I have already said that if they hoped to divert attention from the critical issues of the day, they were not able to do that. They failed miserably. And lest we forget, we want to remind Kenyans of the gross violations of human rights under this regime. The worst of it being the murder of innocent Kenyans, unarmed peaceful protesters on the 25th of June. The arbitrary ar arrests that have continued even today, the abductions, the dumping of bodies, multiple bodies, inquiry, and the fact that up to today, Kenyans do not know how many more bodies are lying in that quarry. Because this re Ruto regime violently removed volunteers who were seeking to fish for more bodies at that quarry. But so many things are happening that we actually no longer appear to be as outraged as we should be. We must demand that that quarry be drained for Kenyans to know whether there are more bodies lying there and for answers to be given as to who is murdering and dismembering Kenyans. 
the Ruto regime had hoped to divert Kenyans from the economic sabotage that is going on. The shared deal of mortgaging Kenyan's premier gateway, the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, to a, the Adani Group, which is scandal ridden, and against whom questions of malpractices are being raised in many parts of the world. This amount, the giving of this Adani Group, our premier gateway, without competitive bidding and without public participation or the approval of parliament, is actually economic sabotage. Jobs stand to be lost, not only at the airport, but also jobs relating to the export of horticultural products. Under this Adani deal, it is the Adani group who will determine what happens at the airport. It means our many farmers, horticultural farmers, and those employed along that chain will be subjected to higher prices because the Andani group have not come as charity workers. They are coming to make money. It means the future of so many has been put in jeopardy. And that is why we call this economic sabotage. The same Adani group is being given concession over power distribution. Again, this is economic sabotage. We are already suffering very high prices of uh, power. We are subjected to that by KPLC. Now with the Andani group, we cannot hope that things will be better. They can only be worse. You wonder why a regime would sabotage its own economy. And the only conclusion we can come to is that Adani is a front for cartels, high placed cartels within the Ruto regime. We have also seen economic sabotage through the deliberate mismanagement of our mineral and marine wealth. Our re mineral resources in Kuala, in Taitataveta, in Busia, in Migori, in Kitui, and many other parts of the Republic, concessions are being given with total opaqueness to foreigners. And with deliberate harm being occasioned to the host communities where these minerals are. This cannot be happening unless Adani is but a mere front of cartels within the Ruto regime. And I want to remind us that during the campaigns, Ruto and his supporters were telling people that they are coming to dismantle cartels. It appears they were talking of themselves coming in to remove if at all there were cartels and to perfect the art of capturing the state and putting it in the hands of cartels. We've also seen the dismantling of a working health system. You will remember that when the Ruto regime came in, NHIF was a going concern and was working for many Kenyans. I can testify that I know of many poor people who are not only assisted to get quality health services by NHIF, but some were assisted to travel to India for treatment. In the two years of the existence of the Ruto regime, NHIF has been, had been run to the ground. Hospitals were no longer accepting NHIF cards. And now since Tuesday, come in 
SHIF, SHIF. We have not forgotten seeing the tears of an old man who had been denied dialysis. But this is just one person. How many others were crying out there, not under the glare of the media without us knowing? We all know that those who require dialysis, if they don't get it on time, it can lead to untimely death. We do not know how many people and in what manner they have been affected by this clumsy transition from NHIF to SHIF. We also were told that SHIF was coming to expand the health services. We know that is a lie. We have seen indication that SHIF will actually restrict access to health for many. It is raiding the pockets of Kenyans, whereas under NHIF, every Kenyan was required to pay 500 shillings a month. SHIF is requiring employed Kenyans to forego 2.75, literally 3% of their salaries. These are already overtaxed Kenyans. And while their pockets are being raid, raided, the services given by SHIF are wanting. There is information that for dental services, families will only access apparently 2,000. There is information that for maternity, mothers will only get payment of up to 10,000. Under Linda Mama, in public hospitals, women were accessing maternity services without paying. How many will be forced to deliver away from hospitals? This is a violation of the Constitution, in particular Article 43, which provides that the government of the day will ensure that Kenyans have qual access to quality health services. We should be transitioning to universal health care across the board, not to reduced health services. So SHIF, as it's being rolled out, is clearly unconstitutional in that it will restrict access to health. And this is an abuse of the human rights of the people of Kenya. There is also a conspiracy to destroy Kenyans' food sovereignty. You are aware of several agricultural bills that have come up that are criminalizing agricultural activities by Kenyans. It is like the Ruto regime is determined to wipe away completely indigenous farming and instead put it in the hands of conglomerates. We know they began by bringing in GMOs when the issue of agriculture is in the hands of conglomerates. Poor people will not access seeds which will be out of their range. And if agricultural activities are criminalized, it means we all have to depend on buying food from the shops. How many can afford? Instead of helping Kenyans, Kenya to be food secure, we are destroying any chance of Kenyans ever being the masters of their own destiny when it comes to food security. Amidst all these chaos and the rollout, the chaotic rollout of SHIF, we have not had the elected leaders from the presidency to parliamentarians highlighting the suffering of Kenyans. Instead, they are all glued to the power games of impeachment.
Kenyans are not diverted, the Kenyan's attention is not diverted to the issues of the day. And that's why participants in El Geo Maraquet were asking whether the impeachment of Gashagua will build the stadiums they were pro uh, promised, whether it will bring the building of the roads that they have been promised and have not so far been built. In other words, Kenyans want their issues attended to, not side shows. And the message to the Ruto regime is clear. Shape up or ship out. Governments are elected and leaders are elected to prioritize the needs of the people. But it appears that Ruto and his regime and the entire parliament are oblivious of the needs of the people. Only very few of the parliamentarians are focused on the issues of the people. We are calling upon Kenyans to continue raising their voices. This regime needs not only to be reminded of its duty, but it needs to be forced out if it cannot attend to the people's needs. We are calling on Ruto and his cronies to heed the call for justice that take us through, throughout the valleys and hills of Kenya and to know that Kenyans have not forgotten that they are being denied their rights, that there is economic sabotage and that life is being made unbearable. And that is why in one voice Kenyans have said, in order to preserve the very soul of our nation, both Ruto and his deputy Gashagwa and the entire government ought to do the honorable thing, exit the stage and pave way for fresh leadership. Na serikali yake. Basi ujumbe ni kwamba tuliangalia ya kwamba ni kutoa pongezi kwa wakenya watambaka balibali walio jitolea kwenda public participation especially siku ya ijuma. Walionyesha ya kwamba hawaja potoshwa na hii miereka ya kutafuta mamlaka ambayo imeletwa na serikali ya William Ruto. Hawaja potoshwa na mambo ya impeachment bado wanataka wahudumiwe. Matakwa yao ya muhimu ihudumiwe. Na ndio walisema kwa sauti moja kutoka pembe zote za nchi yetu. Wakaambia William Ruto na Gashagwa waliingia pamoja na watoke pamoja sababu hawahudumi wa Kenya. Na yale mambo ya nakera wa Kenya sana ya kwamba ya kwanza ni hii shif hii imeletwa ya uh, ku NHIF National Health Insurance Fund. Hata kichwa yangu imekataa kushika jina ya hiyo kitu na wesasema tu shif. Hiyo shif imekuja kubomoa ile nafasi ya wakenya kupata huduma za matibabu bila kuulizwa malipo sababu kondi yetu ndio inasimamia hiyo malipo katika NHIF wakenya walikuwa wanalipa 500 kila mtu kwa mwezi lakini katika shif kila mwenye ameajiliwa kazi anaambiwa atoe asili tatu kwa mia ya mshahara wake Na hao ni wakenya ambao kodi ile wanatoa ni ya juu sana na wako na shida ya pesa. Hata wengi hawawesi pata chakula ya kutosha ya kila siku. Sasa kwa hii mvumo ya shif ya kutoa pesa nyingi, zile huduma wakenya wanapokea zimepunguka. Wamama hawata pata 
kujifungua bila malipo kwa hospitali za umma watalipiwa tu elfu kumi. na kama huduma zako zinaenda juu ya elfu kumi, uko peke yako wamama ngapi wataweza kwenda kwa hospitali ya umma na kulipa pesa kila jamii imepatiwa huduma zimepunguka katika shifu badala ya wakenya kuingia hospitali za umma na kuhudumiwa vile ilikuwa inafanyika watakuwa wanapimiwa na wanaulizwa pesa na wengi hawataweza kupata hizo huduma na swali ni hii kama NHIF ilikuwa inafanya kazi kwa nini tubadilishe hata mahali ilikosa kufanya kazi ni tangu Ruto na watu yake kuingia kwa serikali walikuta NHIF ikilipia wa Kenya hospitali ikiwalipia uh, huduma zote za afya na hata ikipeleka wa Kenya ngambo kuhudumiwa sana sana India lakini kwa shifu hiyo yote itaenda tushaona majonzi ya mzee mkongwe ambaye alikosa dialysis wakati walikuwa wana roll out hii shifu huyo ni mmoja tu tuliweza kuona wangapi wengine walikuwa wakilia bila sisi kujua wangapi wengine wanalia leo wakikosa huduma na tunajua ukikosa huduma ya dialysis inaweza fanya maafa ambayo haikuwa inatarajiwa ni wangapi wamekosa huduma kama hizo na zingine nyingi tunajua shift haitakuwa inapeana huduma kwa wale wako na maradhi ambayo ni kama kansa yale inarudi kila wakati na inaendelea watakuwa wanapima hizo huduma NHIF haikuwa inapima hata mahali haikuwa inalipa pesa yote ile kiasi yao ya kulipa bado walikuwa wanaendelea nayo kwa nini tuletewe um, health service ambayo au health insurance ambayo iko na huduma zimepunguka ikiwa inalipwa pesa nyingi kushinda zamani tumeona pia serikali ya Ruto ikisabotage economy ya nchi kuleta adani group ya adani bila kujulisha wengine ndivyo tuwe na competitive bidding kuwaleta bila idhini ya parliament kuwaleta bila wakenya kuwa na usemi kwa hiyo jambo ni kinyume cha katiba na ni uh, kuzorotesha uchumi wa nchi um, kwa njia ya udanganyifu tukumbuke ya kwamba airport ya Jomo Kenyatta ni kama mlango mkubwa wa nyumba ya Kenya ni lango kuu la nchi yetu kupatia wageni wawe ndio wanaimiliki na ndio watasema vile ni pesa ngapi wa Kenya watalipa wakipeleka mazao yao ngambo horticultural crops, crops and flowers itakuwa kwa mikono ya wale ni kuzorotesha uchumi kuzorotesha kilimo na kazi za wengi na ni kuona ya, ya kwamba ni wengi wataumia kumbuke na robi ni airport Jomo Kenyatta ni airport ya kipekee katika Afrika kwa export ya horticultural crops and flowers sijui itakuwaje tukileta wageni kusimamia mambo yetu na tukiwaleta kwa mlango ya nyuma kwa ufupi mambo ya madini pia wageni wameletwa na kupatiwa concessions kule kwale Taita Taveta Busia Kakamega Migori Kitui Turkana na mahali ingine yote iko na madini tunauliza 
hii mambo yote inafanywa kwa njia isiyo ya uwazi ni ya kuzorotesha uchumi wa wakenya na ni ya kuumiza zile jamii zinaka karibu na hiyo madini sababu hawaulizwi hawaoni faida yoyote na wengine hata afya yao inasorotesha na yale mambo inaendelea na wageni ambayo wamepatiwa leseni ya kufanya hiyo mambo tunasema pia hatutaki usemi wa wakenya uchukuliwe kwa njia ambayo kwa njia ya urahisi katiba inatupatia ruhusa ya kutoa maono yetu vile wakenya walitoa maono na wakasema wanataka huduma na sio mambo ya miereka ya kisiasa kufuatiana concessions bila kuuliza wakenya ni kinyume cha sheria na sauti ya wakenya lazima iwe juu ya mwisho kilimo yetu imezoroteshwa pia na zile sheria zinapitishwa kwa bunge ambazo zinafanya kilimo ya kawaida ya mkenya kuwa kinyume cha sheria ni kusema kilimo itakuja kuachiwa wageni peke yao tutakuwa tunaenda duka kununua chakula yote na mwenye hata kuwa na pesa atakaa bila chakula na atakufa njaa serikali inatakiwa kuona ya kwamba wakenya wamejilisha kwa mambo yote na wako na chakula ya kutosha na sio kupiga wale wanaenda kwa mashamba yao kulima kwa niamba ya wageni inaonekana Ruto akiomba kura alisema amekuja kuondoa cartels lakini alikuwa anamaanisha atakuja kama ile cartel kubwa kabisa ya kuumiza wakenya na kuchukua serikali ya wakenya na kuibinafsisha repurposing the government for their own use kwa hivyo tunaambia Ruto na serikali yake wawe tayari kufanyia wakenya kazi au waondoke ndivyo wakenya waweze kupata uongozi mpya kwa wabunge tunawakumbusha Gachagua alikuwa na kicheko na furaha nyingi wakati alikuwa anatusi uhuru Kenyatta na viongozi wote na sana sana viongozi wa Mount Kenya hakuona siku yake kama itafika leo hii nashtuka wabunge hawaoni wanafurahia kumtupia gashagwa mawe hawajui wakimaliza na gashagwa siku yao pia itafika je wa Kenya <tune>